Have you ever wanted to start reading The Cosmere, but were worried about doing so? Didn't really know where to start because there's so much to it? Worried you might start in the wrong place? Well, I'm here to tell you about my preferred or recommended reading order for Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere Universe. Stay tuned, that's coming up here on Drew's Book Reviews. Alright, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking out this video. If you're here wondering what I think is the best reading order for the Cosmere or just wondering where to start or maybe you're just a Cosmere fan or a subscriber to the channel and you just want to hear what I have to say, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Let's talk about it. And of course, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. So Brandon Sanderson has written a lot in the Cosmere and there's so much more to come. The universe Sanderson has created is just phenomenal. I absolutely love it. And as we approach the December release of Book 5 in the Stormlight Archive, I wanted to talk a little bit about my recommended or preferred reading order for the Cosmere. If you're just getting into it and don't know where to start, this is where I would recommend starting with the Cosmere reading until you're all caught up. And Brandon Sanderson has a habit of releasing books pretty quickly, so who knows if we'll ever be caught up at the rate he releases some of these books. But let's get into it. Let's talk about the Cosmere Preferred Reading Order, or rather my recommended reading order for the Cosmere. People have different orders. Some say publication order, some say chronological order. This is just my recommended reading order, so let's get into it. Now, before we actually start, I do want to emphasize I am not going to be including any of the novellas in the Cosmere in this recommended reading order. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't read them, you absolutely should. Once you get into the Cosmere, I say read everything the Cosmere has to offer. But in, for this video, I'm just focusing on the primary works or main books within the Cosmere, not the novellas. While there are some novellas, this is just to focus on the main books. So let's get into it. Let's talk about recommended reading order. So if you're looking to just get started into the Cosmere, I would recommend that you start with Mistborn Era 1. Uh, so there's actually four planned eras in Mistborn, two of which have already been released. But to start your journey through the Cosmere, I'd recommend Mistborn Era 1. So that those books include, we've got, of course, Mistborn the Final Empire being the first book in that series, followed up by The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages. So together, these three books make up what is what is considered the Era 1. Mistborn, this is a world of Skadril shrouded by mist with the premise, what if the Dark One won? What if the bad guy actually won and dominated the world? for hundreds if not thousands of years. So it's about a band of thieves who's seeking to overthrow an empire. So Mistborn Era 1 is where I would recommend starting your journey through the Cosmere. These are actually a really good introduction to Brandon Sanderson's writing because they're not the first ones that he published and his writing certainly developed uh, significantly between the first published novel and the Mistborn Era. But this is a great place to start, start digging into that world building and world that Sanderson's created with the Cosmere and the unique magic systems that Sanderson books offer. So Mistborn Era 1 is where I'd recommend your dive into the Cosmere to start. Again, that is composed of, of course, Mistborn, the Final Empire, Well of Ascension, and the Hero of Ages. Next up in the Cosmere reading order, I would recommend at this point, once you've completed Era 1 of Mistborn, going back to the beginning, where it all started, the first book that that Sanderson released in the Cosmere universe that he's created. Because I'm pretty sure this is the first book. I'm sure someone will tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm quite confident this is the first book released by Sanderson in the Cosmere, in general, one of his first books published. And that is going to be Elantris. So Elantris, there is more to come with this world that he has created here in Elantris. As I understand, there will be more books, but so far there's only the single book. There are some novellas like The Emperor's Soul, I believe set in the same world as Elantris. So there are still some novellas within this world, but Elantris is basically about a magical city of like godlike beings who something went wrong uh, with their magic system, which was a, composed of a series of writings and that kind of thing. It's got some weird stuff like, you know, floating sentient balls of light, things like that. But something went wrong with the magic and the city began to decay and it was like they're infected with the disease or illness. And Elantris, the once wonderful, beautiful, godlike city, is no longer more, and the people are suffering. And it's like a zombie apocalypse or a city of zombies. It's actually a pretty interesting book, pretty good book, actually. I really enjoyed it. A lot of people, some people really don't like this one, others really love it. Personally, 
I like this one as far as the current standalone Cosmere novels go. This is probably one of my favorite. I really enjoyed the story behind Elantris and the tales of this basically zombified city. And it's just such a good read and really, really quite honestly enjoyable. Uh, so that would be my recommended next read after finishing Era 1 of Mistborn is picking up Elantris, going back to the first one published in the Cosmere. And you'll probably notice uh, definitely the difference in how the writings evolved, I think, from Elantris to Mistborn and so forth and so on. The next one up on this list is another standalone within the Cosmere universe that I would recommend going to next within this reading order. So this is also a standalone novel. Uh, what's really interesting about there are some things within this book that have actually appeared in other books in the Cosmere. And that's one of the great things about Cosmere is everything is linked up and there's these little Easter eggs scattered throughout it. So, you know, there's the same uh, same universe. Now, I'm not going to tell you what in this book is actually found in other books. That's for you to read and find out, as I say. Don't want to spoil it, but that's going to be War of Breakers. So this is a magic system in a world based upon uh, the, this light and power of souls and just weird core stuff so part of that magical power of souls is this idea of breath where people have breaths in their body each breath kind of like being a life and gives them a power and godlike qualities warbreaker the story of a princess from a defeated kingdom who must go and you know marry the god king in order to have peace and unity and it's it's a good book it, it's enjoyable. I didn't like it as much, honestly, as I did Elantris. Although this one was written after Elantris uh, and came out after Elantris. I didn't enjoy it as much, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought the whole like color, different colors aspect to the magic system didn't really play as pivotal role as the story is kind of emphasizing it. And that was really my only drawback to that. But otherwise, I would say it's a good, good entry into the Cosmere. There really aren't, aren't well, there is a bad entry, <laughs> which we'll get, and we're going to save that for last because honestly, it's not that great. But that's that's a whole other thing. We'll get to that last. Anyway, Warbreaker would be next up on my recommended reading list for the Cosmere after you finish up Elantris. All right, so that brings us to Brandon Sanderson's Magnum Opus, the greatest, biggest Cosmere world yet. One that has had such an amazing world building on probably my favorite Cosmere series, hands down, without dispute. This brings us to, and if you don't already know, or if you've been watching this channel, I'm sure you already know, but next up on my recommended reading order, it's going to be Brandon Sanderson's classic, epic in scope, massive tome, The Stormlight Archive. This is probably one of my my favorite fantasy series of all time, my favorite Cosmere world in the Cosmere universe of all time. Right now, it is five books in length with the fifth one set still be released, but this is starting with The Way of Kings. So this is a series set on the world of Roshar with one of the most intricate, detailed, and epic series out there. Magic system, everything about that is, is just amazing. So if you've already gotten through Mistborn Era 1, if you've already gotten through the standalone books within the Cosmere, then I think you're probably ready then for The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, book one of the Stormlight Archive. This world of Roshar is just incredible. You got the Shattered Plains, you got the Spren and the Honor and the Pieces of God and the Knights Radiant and just the Parshendi and just everything is just amazing. So what starts off with The Way of Kings. After The Way of Kings, we come to book two of the Stormlight Archive, The Words of Radiance. The Words of Radiance are certainly important and they have to do with the Knights Radiant within this series. And the words that you speak, the oaths that you speak are an inherent part of becoming those Knights Radiant. And that is something that I'm going to save details for you to go ahead and read the books. I don't really want to spoil anything for you, especially if you haven't read it yet. So Words of Radiance being the second book. And these are big books. I mean, look at them. They're huge. Each one of these Stormlight books is over a thousand pages long. So it is a commitment to be reading the Stormlight Archive. Like I said, if you've already been through the first of the recommended reading, I think you're probably going to be ready for that. Book three of the Stormlight Archive is Oathbringer. Again, another really big, thick book in this series. Oathbringer with... And the artwork. Let's wait. The artwork on these books is just incredible. I mean, let's just be honest some of the best artwork 
Maybe I'm biased because I'm a little bit obsessed with Sanderson, but <laughs> Oathbringer being the next one in this series of books for the Stormlight Archive. And then after Oathbringer, once you're done that, we go move on to Rhythm of War. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive, Rhythm of War. Uh, so this one was amazing, as always. Uh, and again, the artwork, just absolutely incredible on the artwork. You know, honestly, I'm having a hard time deciding which one of these Stormlight books is my favorite so far because I just love them so much. There's something to love about all of them, honestly. Uh, and I would highly recommend the Stormlight Archive uh, just as a series on, even if that was the only stuff in the Cosmere, I'd highly recommend it. And of course, finally, we have Not Yet Released, and I am so looking forward to this book. Honestly, as much as a book nerd as I am, it's not very often there's a book that I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till it's released. And this is one of them, and that's going to be Winds and Truth, which will be the fifth book in the Stormlight Archive. That one is going to be released in December. I've actually been going rereading this through Audible, the Stormlight Archive series leading up to Winds and Truth release, which I can't wait to, wait to do. So this is going to be, that will complete the first arc of the Stormlight Archive, which is going to be two arcs with a time jump in between the first and second arcs with another five books planned. So this is an incomplete series so far. Okay, so now that you've done reading the Stormlight Archive, at least the first arcs, it's going to be a while till the second arcs complete at least. You could fill the void in your new love of the Cosmere after reading this with Mistborn Era 2. So in Mistborn Era 2, we have a time jump. This is a rather big one. We're looking at a couple hundred years. We're going from like a medieval level of technology into the industrial revolution age of Skadriel. So with Mistborn Era 2, uh, we, it's kind of like a wild west of Mistborn, Mistborn, actually more of a kind of wild west setting and wild west ideas and feel behind this, but still imbued with that Mistborn magic system. And that's one of the things I actually love about Mistborn because so much fantasy, thousands of years pass with no technological advancement or development. But Sanderson has actually taken the position that why shouldn't a fantasy world evolve in its technology, in its society, in its culture? Why shouldn't it? And he's writing that right into his epic scope in the Cosmere. We see some of this technological advancement in Stormlight as well. And we're definitely seeing a much, much more within the world of Skadral, which is probably one of the quickest, quickest technologically advancing worlds in this Cos Cosmere. So starting with that, we have the Alloy of Law, which is the first book. This is commonly known as the Wax and Wing series. So like I said, it kind of has that Wild West. We got the Gunslingers and the, you know, Wild West Sheriff in town kind of thing. So we got the Wax and Wayne series. So starting with the Alloy of Law being the first book in Era 2 of Mistborn. This will be followed up by Shadows of Self being the second book in Era 2 of Mistborn and the Bands of Mourning being the third. So this series actually has four the fourth book in this series is is the lost metal now funny enough this was uh i've got this copy of the lost metal but i've never read the physical book i actually read the ebook along with the audiobook when it was first released because i just couldn't wait to read it uh and i had them all in paperback but as you can see there are different formats for the paperbacks here which is really annoying because i couldn't actually find the lost metal in this format to match the rest of my set but that's a whole nother nitpick Forget about that for a moment. We're talking reading order in the Cosmere. But essentially, this is what I'd recommend next right after you read the Stormlight Era. One or Arc 1, I should say. It's not really eras in Stormlight, but when you're finished the first arc of Stormlight coming back into the world of Skadro with Mistborn Era 2, with which is commonly called the Wax and Wayne series. So again, with that, we have the Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self, the Bands of Mourning, and the Lost Metal. I'm not sure how long it will be until Era 3 is published, but as I understand, that's going to be advancing. So like the Computer Age followed up by Era 4, which will be the Space Age. So it's a lot of fun stuff going on here, especially with the world advancement that we see going on within the Cosmere, especially within Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn, which is advancing quite a bit more than other Cosmere worlds, which in and of itself is just a lot of fun. It's so... After you finish Mistborn Era 2, it's time to move on to some more Cosmere books. At this point, I would recommend picking up the Sanderson Secret Project Cosmere books. Now, these have been traditionally published now, so if you weren't part of the Kickstarter, you should still be able to get them. In terms of what reading order for the Secret Project books themselves, reading them in the order they were published is just fine. Uh, there's no, you can read them in any order. 
either way, because they're all standalones at this point. But reading in the order that are published is fine, which is what I did, of course. So starting with the first one, which is Tress of the Emerald Sea. Uh, I'm so happy I joined the Kickstarter on this and was able to get the premium hardcover edition of these books. And they really are just so nice, these premium hardcover editions with some fantastic artwork within them as well. Like these really are nice editions of this these books. But Tress of the Emerald Sea would be the first of the Kickstarter secret project books. So this is where we this is in a unique world as well with multiple moons and each sea is kind of like a different color. This is a pirating adventure kind of a, I believe Sanderson described it as the Princess Bride but in reverse where Tress is off to rescue uh, her love who has been taken captive and that kind of thing. And she basically becomes a pirate in order to save him. So it's kind of like, uh, what if what if the Princess Bride was done the other way around kind of idea. And of course, following Tress of the Emerald Sea, we have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. So this kind of, to me, very much ha had a kind of Asian inspired setting with that, where Yumi is a Nightmare Painter. So they basically have to paint the nightmares away. Nightmares are real life and manifest within this world and has been created here within Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. And his job is to paint away the nightmares and make the nights good again. So again, uh, beautiful edition of this book. I uh, absolutely love these premium hardcover books. They are really quite nice. So glad that I, I was able to get them. But Yumi and the Nightmare Painter would have been the second of the Secret Project standalone Cosmere books uh, that was published. And finally, after that, we have The Sunlit Man. Now this is an interesting book for many reasons. It is set in, I believe, a far distant future Cosmere uh, location. And it is on a world where people are constantly having to outrace the sun. Because if you were to be on the sun side of the planet, you will be burned alive and burned to a crisp. And you're constantly having to be on the move to outrace the sun to stay on the night side of the planet. Uh, so this is uh, definitely and interesting, as you can see from the cover and the artwork, it's definitely more technologically advanced world than we see in other, other Cosmere books. So a lot of what kind of looks like, you know, flying ships or cities uh, on there and definitely some technological advancement within this world as well versus other Cosmere worlds. The Sunlit Man is definitely one that I really enjoyed as well. Of course, uh, you know, in terms of these ones are much simpler reads, a lot less complex in many ways than other Sanderson books, but they're still really fun and enjoyable reads. Uh, so I definitely recommend after Mistborn Era 2, you pick up the Secret Project books with the Sunlit Man. Now there was one other Secret Project book. It isn't set in the Cosmere, but if you want to throw that in since you're doing the Secret Project book reads at this point anyway, then of course there's the Frugal Wizards Handbook. The Frugal Wizards Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. This is kind of like a time sci-fi time travel book. Uh, not part of the Cosmere though, so I mean, if you want to throw it in, go ahead. But as this is about the Cosmere reading order, that would be optional, I guess, since it's not really part of the Cosmere, but you get the gist of it. And then finally, for the Cosmere, there is one other book that, you know, we'll, we'll give it an honorary mention since it's part of the Cosmere, but I gotta be honest, when it comes to the Cosmere, it's probably the worst of the bunch. And I really, you can read it to read your Cosmere if you want, but I would say it's not really necessary at this point. This book is actually a graphic novel series, uh, and that is gonna be the White Sand graphic novel series by Brandon Sanderson. So of course, White Sands 1, White Sand 2, and White Sand 3. So this is kind of set on the world, I believe, Tell Bane, which is tidally locked. So one side's always night, the other side's always day, uh, nighttime. Uh, and, you know, it's desert magic, it's sand magic. Uh, it was all right. Uh, you know, maybe it's just me because I'm not really into the graphic novel scene. I don't know why, maybe I should be, because it definitely is a, a worthy art form in and of itself. Uh, but I just never really got into the graphic novels, honestly. Uh, so I don't know if it was the graphic novels, but I've heard the sentiment as well from many Cosmere fans that White Sand isn't exactly top-notch Cosmere. Uh, definitely, you know, honorary mention, if you want to make sure that you read all the Cosmere, the White Sand, sure, pick it up and read it. But it wouldn't be one that I would necessarily rush to include in your Cosmere reading list either. Just kind of, meh, all right. <laughs> So yeah, there you have it. There is my Cosmere recommended reading list uh, in the order that I would recommend that you read the Cosmere. 
I would love to hear from you below. Have you read the Cosmere? Have you wanted to, but didn't know where to start? And this video has helped you. I'd love to hear it, hear your comments on that as well. Uh, you know, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep on reading. Bye.